And out comes little Jelly Bean. Like, oh my God, that little first little cry just tugged at my heartstrings. Like, my baby fever heart just melted to pieces, y'all. Y'all just don't understand. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of The Handmaid's Tale, Season 2, Episode 11, Holly. We only got two more episodes left of this season, y'all. Two more episodes left. I apologize that y'all heard the clickety-clack on the floor. That's my dog. Um, but I need to start this particular recap off with a disclaimer. Um, nothing happened. It's just I felt the... Um, need to say this as my viewership grows and as a presenter or viewer um i just felt that it was my responsibility to make this statement so um although this show closely resembles like the current state of what's going on in the world today um with our different governments even our real lives it is indeed a fictional tale of events um however i do believe that um these factors um, that's presented on this show, they actually exist in some form of fashion in different cultures and different religions, different communities as a whole, whether it's done illegally or by an accepted practice in that um, community. So basically I'm saying that life imitates art, art imitates life. And with that being said, as much as I cuss out these characters, as much as, much as I curse them to death and say I want them to die, I, too, am speaking fictitiously. Um, I'm speaking of these fictitious characters. Um, I do not wish death upon anybody, um, not in my current reality. I value life, and I feel that as a presenter of this show, um, that I have some type of responsibility to let my viewers know that and for it to be clear and understood because there are some people that have a hard time separating fiction from reality. And when they have trouble doing that, it can cause them to act in a way that may be harmful to others, whether it's with or without consciousness. Um, so again, I just want to say that this is a fiction. This show is a fiction. We may weave our real life experiences into the storylines. We can relate to the different events that take place. It may take us to dark and... Um, dreary places that we never thought of either going or even wanted to return to and we have hearty 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 debates and conversation in the comment section which i love you know we talk about what we feel we talk about what we watch what we could should or wouldn't do to the characters if in fact this dystopian future this dystopian future is becomes our present day situation we talk about those things and those feelings themselves they are real and it's more real to some than others because we've been through some of these things. But I hope as viewers um, that we are able to separate the actors and actresses from the actual characters that are playing on this show or that's in the book. And by doing so, by creating that separation, we don't transfer those feelings that we have to them as actors and actresses. Or anyone else for that matter, especially in the comment section because of the difference of views. So like I said before, this is not specific to anyone or anything. I just simply felt a responsibility to say this because the viewership that's growing on this particular show. Um, and I've had some previous experiences um, when reviewing or watching other TV shows because they evoke so much raw emotion from the viewers. So I just want to thank you all um, for your viewership, for your comments especially for the fact that we are able to remain respectful of each other in the comment section even when we don't agree um i appreciate each and every one of you now let's get on with the recap we left off with june alone in the woods that big old house nick being carted off by the guardians it appeared he was shot but as someone mentioned there was no blood in the snow so it's possible he may have not have gotten shot no i think most of us agree that fred set them up that's the that's the consensus that fred set them up we got a lot of theories floating around and i think that he set them up and it was basically to pay back everybody including serena like his ego was bruised and he needed to like feel in control again and everything from the intensity into which he raped june to nick being drug off by the guardians i think that was fred's way of being in control okay so this week She's still standing out there in the snow, y'all. Still standing out there in the snow in a state of shock. And she starts running, but her full belly holds her back. 
And like I said, there was no blood in the snow. So June spots the shed that I mentioned in the comment section. I'm like, break a window, girl, break a window. She trying to kick that daggone door open. What did she see? A car. There's a car in there. Man, I was hoping that there was a car on the inside. So she pauses. I was like, okay, girl. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Baby, she looked up and there's a damn wolf. Like, what the? Who thinks of this shit? Who gonna put the fucking wolf in the middle of the damn woods? I'm like, stay calm, June. Stay calm. I know you're feeling contractions right now, but this is not the time to panic, right? So she turns away from it. Cause, you know, you're not supposed to make prolonged contact with, with canines because they may think it is a challenge. Like, some dogs will be submissive. Like, my dog, I can make prolonged contact with him and he will sit his ass down. Let somebody else try to stir him down. He gonna get at that ass. That's what I'm saying. So, you, she don't know. She don't know what this wolf life about. She don't know if she about that life with this wolf. So, she turned away from him. She slowly walks. Then she take off running. <laughs> she take off running and gets back into the house. First, I was like, don't turn your back on the girl. Don't turn your back on it. But he didn't follow her, and I was very surprised. So she gave an apology, and that apology was to us as the viewers. I'm saying, you know, she they, they were drawing us into the show as viewers right here. She was like, I am sorry. There is so much pain in this story. I'm sorry that it's in fragments. It's like our body caught in crossfire and pulled apart by forces. I was like, you better write, write us. Y'all better go ahead on and write. Well, June, she starts frantically searching through the house. I don't know what she was looking for, but she'll, she'll know when she find it. Um, maybe she was looking for the keys. You know, that's what I was thinking. Maybe she was looking for the keys to the garage. And, like, there's food in the house, you know. There's the Dow house that Hannah played with, which momentarily reminded her that Hannah was really there. And then there's a picture of Hannah. I was like, was this her home? Like, this was her home. Oh, well, Damn. So we go back in the day when Hannah was going off to school for the first day. A little Hannah Banana girl. Well, they changed the actress for little Hannah Banana. That's a different little girl. Like, I remember Hannah Banana's face like it was my own. That's a different little girl, but that that's never neither here nor there. So, anyway, Hannah was not letting June go. She, like, she don't care. She don't care the second day of school. I don't want you to go. You can't leave me. This separation was so similar to the one she just had. Like... Especially when she starts screaming mommy. I was like, you remember mommy just tugged on the heartstrings last week. That was the exact same situation playing out all over again. I didn't have that experience with my daughter. I didn't. Like, put her off to school and she was like, deuces? Like, bye? Like, even the first time that I took a trip out of town, I was gone for like a week. I came back, like, hey, baby, I'm home. And she was like, you back so soon? You mean you finna end my vacation because yours was over? I was like, what? You know? Well, anyway. She continued her search, and um, she found the keys. She found a set of keys. She looked outside. The wolf is gone. So on the second try, the key fits the door. I'm like, oh, sweet relief. All right, now. That was a nice-ass car. What was that, a Shelby? It looked like a Shelby. I don't know what year that Shelby was, but it looked like a Shelby to me. Sex is a motherfucker. I have a thing for high-performance cars, and that just, yeah, sexy. That's a sexy car. But well, she put the key in the ignition. Sputter, sputter. Vroom, that mug started up. I was like, yes, yes, we finna get up out of here. The radio comes on, and on news is Radio Free America. I was like, guys, we got a Radio Free America broadcasting from somewhere out there in the great white north. All right, now. So, she learns that uh, India and China, they finna give some aid to Anchorage, you know. The UK, they cracking down on Gilead, and Canada... They're going to increase the number of refugees they're going to allow to come into the country. Y'all just don't know how happy that made me feel. I felt like I was going through it myself. I, I really felt good to hear that. To know that the world has not completely gone to hell in a handbasket. That somebody is out there trying to do something. That somebody is rooting for you to win. they like, let's go and play a song for y'all. Let's go and get a song out here for these American patriots, the Gilead traders. This one's for you, boo. This one's for you. But when she killed that engine... And said, fuck it, and got out that car. I was confused. What the fuck are you doing? Like, mind you, I didn't know what her plan was going to be anyway when she got in the damn car. But uh, this ain't making sense to me. I'm like, is she going to stay there until the baby is born? What is she thinking? What's going on right now? I mean, there's food in the house, right? But so much can go wrong with that pregnancy. I'm like, I got questions, June. I got questions. Well, she goes back in the house. Starts gathering up food. 
I thought she was about to make a meal the way she was setting it out on the little the, the little cup the platform. But uh, then she started packing the food up in the bag. She got food. She got water. She got medical supplies. She got blankets. I was thinking, take it all, girl. Take it all. Leave nothing behind. Yet at the same time, hurry up and get your ass out that damn house. Hurry the fuck up. I am screaming at her to get the hell out of that damn house. So she goes back inside. I already knew. That she was going to go up there and get out that red dress. Get off your red dress. Yes. But there is nothing there. Like, ain't nothing there but the uh, the wife's old uniform and the commander's coat in another room. Well, she pauses to take her image, take a look at her image in the mirror. Belly off for the little jelly bean. I don't know why I named that baby jelly bean. It just seems to fit for me. It rolls off my tongue with ease. Jelly bean. So, then she thinks back on her, uh, her, her and Luke. And they head to a book release and she look in the mirror. Or she look in the mirror. Luke is looking at her and admire her little belly. All full with little Hannah Banana. So, she hears a car outside. I'm like, damn it. It's Fred and Serena. What the fuck? Why are you still there? Fuck, June. You should have been gone by now. That's all I can think of. It's damn, damn, damn. Girl, come on for real. Serena bust in. Oh, fuck. She is hollering. Like, Fred gonna pretend like he concerned. Like, Commander McKenzie, Nick, and I, that damn house is empty as hell. Ain't no lights on, all the furniture covered up. You just walked right on in the front door of your damn self. Ain't no car sitting outside, and you in here screaming for McKenzie and Nick. You ain't fooling nobody, Fred. You ain't fooling nobody. But he like, let's go home. We're going to figure it out all later. Like, we shouldn't even be here ourselves. Serena's like, oh, hell to the no. No, 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 no. We not leaving. We ain't leaving here without my baby. She goes to the kitchen. She sees the cupboards are open. And she's like, mm-hmm, I told you it was her. And they probably still her. And uh, he tried to say, maybe they never reached her. You know, Nick, pretty lawyer. He gonna call us soon. He like, fine. We gonna look. But it, it ain't gonna be all day. We ain't gonna be up here all day. So Serena's like, baby, she hot. Hotter than fish grease. She hot right now. She's stomping all through the house. And she hear noise from upstairs. Rushes to see what it is. She heads into the room where we last seen June. I don't know where June went. And she sees in the mirror June's coat and bonnet laying on that bed in the other room. She knows without a doubt that they were there. She flat out stares like, oh, I thought they weren't her. I thought they weren't her. Now they probably on the run. <laughs> and it's your fucking fault that they did, thanks to you. He like, no, I said, Nick is loyal. I let her see her child. She gonna be grateful. So he's like, how could your ass be so stupid, boo? She hated you. He say, uh, me? As if, if your ass could have been a little kind, could have mussed up a little kindness in your soul, and maybe she wouldn't have left. Kindness, kindness, you raped her yesterday, motherfucker. You raped her. He like, bitch, that was your idea. Uh, it's, I did that to fix your mess. So Serena say, you going to send her out here with her baby daddy, like for real. Like, what the hell was you thinking, Brainiac? What you think was going to happen? If Fred didn't set them up, baby, he is doing a good job at pretending he didn't right now. I mean, he almost had me convinced. Almost. But June ass, stupid. You know, they down there arguing away. And her dumb ass decides to look in the chest. They weren't going to come back upstairs. Like, but that old rickety ass check, uh, chest creaked. And I think Fred heard him. Because then all of a sudden, he's like, I got this. I'm going to fix this. So Serena is like, you know, it's bad enough that she ran away once. But twice... How are we going to figure this out? How are we going to explain this shit? Fred said, you know what? I got this. She's like, really? You got this? Just like you do right now. You got this like right now. So Serena's like, you know what? They're going to hang us on the wall. They're going to hang us up. Fred said, it'd be my fucking luck that they hang my ass right next to you. <laughs> All right, y'all. We go back upstairs to June, and she's still fiddling around with that chest baby. And she pulled out that shotgun. Praise be under his eye. All of that, Yes. Serena down there telling Fred, I gave up everything for you. And you and the cause. All I ever wanted was a damn baby. And he like, uh, she gave up everything for me. She said, yeah, and if you weren't so fucking infatuated with the damn handmaid, we wouldn't be here right now. Boy, Joan loaded that gun, got ready to aim on their ass. I was like, get them. Fire them up, girl. Fire them up. <sighs> but she hesitated. Why? Because he got a pin up against the wall, like crying about what she done lost and what she don't have. Fuck her. Shoot they asses. Shoot them. That's what I'm saying. Save the drama for your mama, Serena. I don't give a damn. So, knowing her, her damn mama probably somewhere in the damn colonies or Martha some fucking where. Well, June is topside, trembling. 
heavy breathing, unable to pull the trigger while Fred and Serena down are having a moment. They need a moment. Well, she pushes Fred away, who is trying to offer her a little bit of solace and shit, a little bit of comfort that he got in his little spineless self. Well, now they out of damn range, so she didn't shoot their ass. One of them should have been hit. One of them should have been hit. Fred tell her, look her, we need to go. I call security, the local security, but we need to go. The car drives off. And I'm thinking he heard her upstairs. Like, is this a setup to force her out? Be careful, girl. Be careful. Well, they gone. Like, for real. I was so surprised. <laughs> June tips toes through the window. Gun shells in hand. Gun in the shells in hand. And then, um, see if they really left. Baby, that contraction hit her ass like a Mack truck smacking into a vibranium wall. I swear for goodness. I said vibranium. I watched too much Black Panther, but you, you, you understand. Like, her mother... Go back in the day now. Her mother's giving June and Moira the rundown of her problematic, unmedicated childbirth that she had with June, right? And basically, she was trying to get June to give birth, I think, at the birthing center, um, probably with the midwife or whatever, trying to be as natural as possible. But June was like, no, mm -mm, I don't know about all that. Like, the hospital, it's like a good idea to me. You got the medication, all the drugs, you know, nurses, doctors, all that around. And she said, plus, you're acting like you're going to even be there, ma. <laughs> like... She says, what you talking about? Nothing is more important to me than you. Their relationship had to be real sour. Like, June was like, don't make promises to me that you can't keep. And I mean, me and my mother, my mother and I, whichever one it is, our relationship is hella fucking shaky. I got some horror stories about what happened during my pregnancy and when I gave birth to my child. But she was there for it. That's what I mean. She was there for it. So I was like, damn. I was trying to do a natural childbirth, but I told y'all that story last week. That didn't work out. But anyway, June, baby, you on your own. You on your own. Unless that bastard Fred show back up, you on your own. Well, June, go back out to the garage. And of course it won't open. There's no electricity. She ain't got the power to lift the dog on door. Plus, that manual release probably old as dead and stuck. Especially while she in labor. She ain't got that strength. Even though they say you can get the strength of a gorilla, she ain't got that right now. There's only one way out, sis. Bust the door down. Bust it. Bust it down, back it up, try again, bust it up. Don't worry about damaging the damn car, just floor that shit. I don't know what the hell that damn door was made out of, but it did not budge. I mean, she was ramming that motherfucking car. That car made of steel. It ain't no fiberglass car. That car's made of steel. She couldn't get that motherfucker out that damn door. I was like, you could take my garage door down with one good hit. That door didn't budge. Wasn't even a dent in it. Well, she goes back outside, tries again. Try to lift that door. Ends up falling in the damn snow. I'm like, oh, fuck. I think she broke her water. Fuck, 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 fuck. Me and June saying it together. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And there goes that damn wolf again. Like, is this motherfucker her guardian? Is he going to be like one of the dire wolves on Game of Thrones? Like, what gives with this dog on wolf? Like, he howling and stuff. Is he calling the pack to come later? What is going on? Well, she make it safely back into the house. You know, with labor pains intensify. Every breath she takes, she feel it. More and more pain. I would have had that bounce myself or something, some grease to lube up the JJ oil it all up. And I'm like, are we about to get the baby this episode? That's when we're going to get this baby? We got a few more episodes left. June is in full on label, y'all. I mean, she didn't label with Hannah Banana back in the day. And true to form, mama ain't there. I'm like, oh my damn. June is laying there on that floor, bleeding the fuck out. Oh, my God. I'm like, please do not tell me that this baby died when she fell. I cannot take that. My pressure can't handle that. She ain't in pain no more. She just there. You know what I'm saying? She tell old Jelly Bean, look, I know. I promised you. It's going to be okay. She takes her gun, heads out back into the snow. Okay, another contraction here. So the baby's still there. I'm like, ooh, y'all got my pressure up. And there the damn wolf is standing there. She aims the gun off into the distance. One, two, three, four shots. The wolf takes off. She's signaling for them to come find her. Like, come get me. Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah! Oh, what she tell her mama? Don't make promises that you can't keep. That's what she meant to little Jelly Bean. She can't keep her promise about her not being born there in Gilead. But back in the house, June is in, like I said, full label. She is pushing, pushing, trying to get a little jelly bean out. And luckily, you know, um, she's been through this before. You know, she done gave birth before. She know the drill. She reflects on that moment. She recalls her 
makeshift Lamaze classes by Aunt Lydia. You know, they, the routine they had to go through when Janine had her baby. Um, yeah, she remembering all this. And I'm, I'm seriously breathing that with. I'm breathing it and pushing it. Am anybody else doing it besides me? I was breathing and pushing like I swear. Childbirth is a scary, beautiful thing. Like, and out comes little jelly bean. Like, oh my God, that little first little cry. Just tugged at my heartstrings. Like, my baby fever heart just melted to pieces, y'all. Y'all just don't understand. Like, I didn't see her cut the cord, though. Like, I don't know about in this particular Gilead world, but in ours, the longer you delay cutting the cord, you can increase jaundice, you know, the baby. Um, I think that's accurate. I'm not certain on that. But anywhere, anybody that's watching this, a nurse or a doctor, y'all let me know down in the comment section of me, wife, whatever. Then all the jelly bean. We get the flashback to Hannah Banana's birth. After it's all said and done, here comes mama. She made it. Late, but she made it. So, I'm like, is Jelly Bean a boy or a girl? You know? She introduces Hannah Banana to her grandmother, Holly. And now we know. Little Jelly Bean is a girl. And Holly is her name. I was like, oh, man. Look, Holly and Hannah. She like, hey, you got a sister named Hannah Banana, you know. The baby cool. My my uterus flipped. Y'all don't understand like how much I love newborn babies. Like you are holding life in your hands. And as she's laying there, headlights approach. And June say, We did it, Holly. Did what? Who the hell just showed up, girl? Who the hell just showed up? All right, y'all. That is the end of this episode. Thank y'all for coming back. <laughs> like, comment, share. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already do so. Hit the notification bell on your way out. I appreciate you being here. Peace.